Hi everyone, part three, Love on the Rocks. We left it when Gene, the American oil tycoon possibly, the Golden Goose, had just agreed with O that they would go shopping the next day and they'd said good night and arranged in the morning to meet up and head off. Morning came, they're still in this hotel, O's got one more night booked into this hotel. Jean is probably three, four days into his two week holiday in Phuket. O meets him in the morning and they head off to the local shopping centres and throughout the day Gene buys some stuff for himself and he buys O oh, some nice clothes, buys us some nice designer sunglasses as well. He spends about five hundred dollars on her. Which seems he he is very well off and it's it's small change to him. They get on really, really well. O oh, is dressed very smart. But Phuket is limited to shopping. Oh, is still trying to work out whether she's going to take this guy, Jean, for a short time um, extraction, taking money off him as quick as possible, maybe down the marriage route, or whether she's going to keep him. Maybe she'll fall for him. Maybe she'll spend the rest of her life with him. You just never know. But she needs to get Jean to Bangkok, where the she can get serious shopping done with him. One of O's things that she's been doing, she's built up a few million bars in the bank. She lends money to other girls. She's a money lender with her money. And she has a room in Patea that she rents. She's now got a room in Phuket she rents. When she's in Bangkok, she has a friend, a girlfriend, with a condo that allows her to stay there free. But the end goal for O seems to be she wants a nice condo in Bangkok and she wants a house somewhere near a beach in Thailand. That's the, the big goal. They uh, have a great day shopping and they get some food lunchtime, shopping, they make it last all day come to evening and it's back to the hotel and Jean's very happy. O is doing everything she can to seduce him and try and get him to fall for her. Evening meal, yes, all agreed and again they go off for an evening meal. end of the night oh knowing that she she's now planning on how she can get him to Bangkok she's already indicated that she's got to go off to Bangkok so she's figuring out how far she can go with him to hook him what does she need to do to hook him to maybe make him give up his five-star hotel and go up to Bangkok to see her and in the back of her mind, she's even thinking of condo shopping already. She's plotting, planning, very clever businesswoman. But how far does she go to hook him? Does she spend the night with him or is that too far? And she decides not to spend the night with him. She thinks that that might let him off the hook a bit. She wants to make him wait and court her properly that way she thinks he's going to give her more respect if she hooks him end of the evening they've had the meal again back to the hotel perfect gentleman kisses her on the cheek and she says she'll meet him for breakfast and then she's heading off so she said we'll chat in the morning they haven't really chatted about the next day as of yet off they go to bed, separate rooms, morning comes, down to breakfast and they're sat breakfast chatting 
and she explains to Jean her business that she does a bit of money lending she also buys a few shares and bits and pieces and her goals she tells him about her goals about getting a condo in Bangkok and a house by the by the beach somewhere as a long-term goal and that's what she's working towards but she's got to go to Bangkok but it's that time of the month where she needs to go and get her investments and collect money and bits and pieces she tells him she's got a friend with a condo and she stays there um, and she's uh, probably gonna be in Bangkok for maybe 10 days which coincides with him finishing his holiday he flew into Phuket he flew straight there from the States so he's no reason to go to Bangkok at all and he's got his five-star hotel booked and paid for this is the moment when she'll find out whether she's got him on the hook so they're having breakfast she tells him her plans says she's about to head off after breakfast to the airport and fly up to Bangkok she gives him a piece of paper with her phone number on and her email address or a line address or whatever it is and he just gets a pen out of a handbag and a bit of paper asks him to scribble all his details down which he does and you can see she said you know, she, his face has sort of dropped the fact that she's leaving um, and she's going and she can see that the hook is working he'd finished with that other bar girl and he'd sort of been broken hearted here he is now with a beautiful woman who's not in the bar scene as far as he knows and she's about to leave him but he's a businessman as well he's he's playing it a little bit cool and he says to her, well, it's been fantastic meeting you and everything. If uh, my plans change, I've got your details, I can get hold of you. And she says, yeah. And that's it. She's like, I'm off. So they both finish breakfast, stand up, he gives her a cuddle. And she says, bye, and walks off. Back to her room, down, checks out. He's not about. And uh, off she goes out of the hotel. One of the things she seems to be good about is paying her way. And the girl that passed Jean on to her, the golden goose, the girl that he had finished with. I would promise that girl that a bit of a cut if anything happened. And O seemed to be good for her word. When she left the hotel, she got on the phone to that girl, and that girl, it was you know morning still, but she'd woke her up and got her on the phone, said, let's meet, I'll talk to you about this guy, and I'll give you a bit of money. Of course, that girl's not going to turn that down. Um, they arranged to meet in an hour at some food court. The girl said that she's gonna be going into work early, so just off Bangla Road, the beach end, and there was just a little soy with some bars. She said, can you meet me at the bar and we'll get some food by there? I said, yeah, absolutely fine. So O just saunters off, probably grabs a tuk-tuk, just down the beach, round the corner to this bar and sure enough this girl turns up and they just go across the road to a noodle bar have some food together and O says to this girl look I don't know whether I spent a couple of days with him but we haven't slept together I don't know whether he's gonna contact me I'm heading off to Bangkok now um, but he did spend about $500 on me yesterday and a few the day before and a couple of nice meals so she said, here's 5,000 baht, which is not a huge amount of money, but it's, it's a nice little chunk of money. And the girl was over the moon. She'd lost this golden goose. It wasn't, he wasn't gonna come back to her. Um, and here she is being presented with 5,000 baht, which is like a night's work for her, possibly, or a couple of nights. 
So she's over the moon and she takes the 5,000 baht and says thank you so much. And then O says, look, if anything does happen, that's it, I'm not going to give you any more, it's just a one-off. And the girl says, okay, I understand that. Thank you. At least you've given me some money, which is nice. And that's it. Transaction done. So they say goodbye. O's got a small case with her. Um, she comes out of the soy and she gets a taxi. She's got to go back to the room and put some stuff there and get some other stuff to go off to Bangkok. So she gets on the back of a bike taxi. Stood across the road from where she gets the bike taxi is a foreigner. And the foreigner spots her and he immediately jumps on another bike taxi and follows her to her room. She gets back to her room, which is Phuket town, which is a couple of uh, kilometers away. So the foreigner on the bike stops a bit further down the road, just watches her. And she's in there for a bit. This foreigner's on the phone. 25, 30 minutes later, O's got everything packed, she's going to head off to Bangkok. She comes out of her room, a little bit of a small complex, down some steps to the road. As she gets to the bottom, this foreigner's there and a policeman. Who's this foreigner? It's Dave. The guy she married in the village got the sin sod off him he stood there in front of her he's found her he spotted her how do you find her Dave was furious after being dumped and giving her all that money he felt like he'd been cheated he'd been it was a setup he didn't know what had happened, but he was furious. He had flown back to Phuket some four or five days earlier. He'd gone to the police. He'd told the police what happened. And the police pretty much laughed at him when he said to them, I'd met a Thai girl. We fell in love. We went to her village. We got married in the village ceremony. I gave the family money for Sinsod and explained all this to the police and then she dumped me the police were saying she's done nothing wrong you've got married it's not worked out you've paid money and gone however um, the police said you can maybe file a complaint you can get a lawyer maybe try to get your money back and that's partially what he'd done he'd gone found an interpreter, found a Thai lawyer, gone through everything, and there was a potential claim because the marriage was sort of null and void. There was a possibility he could get some of his money back, if not all of it. But he had to find her. Um, and in his hotel, just by coincidence, uh, the person, the man in the room next to him, an Australian guy, happened to be a uh, work for the police in a protection unit looking after VIPs and things and they'd got chatting and they'd end up having breakfast together I don't know where he was from somewhere like Melbourne in Australia and this 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 policeman guy had said to him about if he told this guy about um, oh and the policeman had said to him well you know explains basic ways of tracking someone down people's habits they do tend to have certain habit habits and travel in similar circles if you keep watching those areas there's a chance you might get lucky and this this advice from this policeman had worked because Dave then had started going around Bangla Road and the Soys where they'd been on the honeymoon on the chance that she was still around there and still 
frequent in that area and he got lucky because he'd seen her come out with this girl on the bike you know from this girl jumped on a bike he'd followed her to a room rang the police rang the interpreter anyway police are there and they arrest her on the spot there she is bag ready to go to Bangkok arrested what's gonna happen is she gonna lose all that money she's got Jean on the hook she's got to get to Bangkok he's what's gonna happen with him she's now being arrested mm. Oh well, we'll find out the next time, eh? Bye for now.